Guys, the shenanigans around the shop are getting a little bit crazy. This is this is what I walk into. Class, beating up on the poor little down and out Mustang. Look at that. When he's backing up, he said he felt a little bump. So in this Corvette Fever article of June of 1998, it says, uh, as rumors become myths and facts are proven at the trek, we can only wonder what's next for the fastest naturally aspirated vet in the world. At the time, Corvette Fever was calling it the fastest naturally aspirated vet in the world. From about 1996 to 2000, we believe that this held the fastest naturally aspirated Corvette in the world title. When people started really modifying the LS stuff, the LS has really took over and the rest is history, as they say. Recently, we've received some pictures of a Corvette that has been donated by John Blinn to the National Corvette Museum. The original owner was Bob Honeycutt, who is still a close family friend today. My father and he had built this car in the mid 80s, and turns out I actually got my first hot rod, which was a 1985 Corvette from that same Bob Honeycutt. Man, I can't get over how good those look. It's so neat to see them kind of back up in, in the game. Man, so how, how light do you think these things were? They're actually lighter than these. Yeah, I was hoping that they were. That's a bias ply I think that we have on the front of the Caprice. And I know that those things are really, really light, but we'll check that out. So guys, when you're putting on your bead locks, you definitely want to glue it. It's a necessity so that it doesn't leak and or it is also going to give you some adhesion to keep that thing stuck. If you guys have been watching for a while, you know we always talk about rotating mass and unsprung weight. And I was kind of blown away at how light these really are. Like I knew that they were light. This thing reads about three pounds high, 24. So that's about 22 pounds. Crazy, crazy light. Now let's check the rears here. All right, man, giving me the chills. It's been a long time since I've seen it look like that. It looks so good, right? Yeah, they do. So badass. So Laz, you got a bunch of time polishing these. I messed around with it for a little bit and- George got a Everybody's got a hand it. I think Liam was even working on them for a little bit there. A four person collaboration here. Holly, come on, come on. <laughs> got a lick. <laughs> She's by. <laughs> yeah, so we tried to get her polish in a little bit earlier and she like snapped at Laz and then took off. ABS kick in there. And like 33 pounds. That is insanely light for a wheel and tire. So normal drag reel, I'm gonna guess this thing is, that's on a 17. I still think that'll probably be about 55 pounds. Just changing the wheel and tire alone could be worth somewhere in the neighborhood of say 20 horsepower or so. So the mystery remains if these are real ZR1 wheels or not, but we just pulled that off and that was there. I didn't even recall that that was there. And that, I, re I do remember that had to have a spacer, like a 5 16 Mr. Gasket spacer, I believe. Oh, I know. And that's what we're doing today. Yeah, man, it's coming back around. So let's weigh, let's weigh the front here. Oh, it's over there. He already weighed it. Okay. Let's check out that is. Holy crap. 46 pounds for the front. All right, so with 23 pounds per front, and that one was 46, we're actually saving 46 pounds of weight off the nose of this girl here. That's definitely gonna help with the 60 foot. In part, that's kind of why this thing was able to 60 foot so good. The more weight you take off the front, the easier it's gonna be to kind of pull the wheels and do a lot better weight transfer to the rear there. Man, that's got a pretty mean little look there. <laughs> you lost your arm in the induction right there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it goes way up there. So you just saw Cooper kind of lose his arm in there. Now this right here, we're thinking about sealing off the top side of that, going to the filter so that everything is truly forced in because air is always going to take the path of least resistance. After years of collecting dust and, uh, and neglect, totally on my part, this thing looks so, so much better. We still got to clean it up. Had to had to stick it outside, it was in the rain a little bit, but man, totally, totally looks so much better than what it did. Has those on there, look at those big old meat. And guess what, we got our carpet here too. So we're finally putting the carpet back in, kind of been away for a while. I love the way this is gonna look, that uh, the red stuff was really, really faded and kind of nasty. Push and lift at the same time, he says. All right, so it's gonna be a little two-tone. If your ladies like Christian Louboutin shoes, then this is gonna be very much like the same thing. And if you don't know what that shoe is, you will, because your lady probably does. The door panels. Oh man, that's gonna be pretty cool. Yeah, I kinda like that better. I think that it brings a little bit of a different, uh, it's just, you know, the monotone was kinda, I think it's gonna be a lot better this way. We're just gonna make sure that we don't have any of the golden retrievers in there, otherwise we will never, ever 
get out all the hair. So guys, if you remember when we first had this thing, it had the uh, kind of the wood grain that my dad had done. It was kind of a custom wood grain setup that he had. Uh, we actually took that out and we had a friend of ours that built some really, really nice custom high-end SEMA builds and stuff. We're gonna take that and we're gonna kind of change the color of it. So he was kind of suggesting a black wood, which is almost like, let's take a look. Like he kind of likened it a little bit to the back, but he wanted to have kind of a stain in a way too, right? You can still see all the grain of the wood. Okay. Just have the black tint to it. Yeah. And see, I didn't realize, like this one this doesn't one's... seem to have as much of the epoxy on it. This one's not poured, this one's sprayed. Okay. Like, well, that one, yeah, that one's poured. You can really, really tell the difference in the contour right there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really, really radius. And it's actually a lot thicker than I kind of kind of like, thought. Uh, Tom from Tom Argo Designs, he's a, he's a guy that built some super, super high-end builds. He was gonna knock this down. So I don't know exactly how the procedure is, what he's gonna do, but the only thing I can possibly assume is going to he's gonna have to sand that down to the base wood, a layer of, uh, well, stain that's gonna kind of make it look like a black wood. But I think it's gonna look a lot more modern than what we had going on there. So got a couple more panels that we gotta pull, but she is coming together quite nicely here. These were so ridiculously moldy before and Laz took them all apart and cleaned them all up and they look really really good so they don't even smell the same they don't look the same <laughs> they're definitely a totally rejuvenated seat so i'm really stoked holly where are you going holly wait come here holly she looks like you hurt her feelings what did you do oh my gosh can't, you can't trust her when she's out of her mouth closed like this oh what do you have do you have an acorn again <laughs> she'll get smuggle it. them in her lips get in there cooper <laughs> i did <laughs> oh. she downed it She's like a prison inmate that has contraband. She's storing them for winter. <laughs> so kind of recapping about the wood, we have about eight panels that we feel are going to be, that we're gonna redo and kind of bring it a lot more modern look to it. I think that's gonna really change the uh, the interior as well as what we're doing with the carpet. Kind of rejuvenated this the seats. This thing's coming together pretty good. We got the seats in and it, we went as far as we can go. The uh, sill plates and the door skins are at another shop getting finished up here. Looks so much better here. In fact, we actually just recently found out from a, uh, a friend of my father's that he had planned on actually changing the black carpet as it was. I had no idea, but he just kind of told us that out of the blue because he's been kind of watching some of the episodes lately. So that was really cool to kind of know that I was actually going in my dad's direction even though we had never ever spoke about it. It just seemed like a natural thing and he was always a big fan of black, but man, it really, really looks so much better. Looks so nice and plush, all that brand new carpet. Seats are all cleaned up, everything's kind of put back to the way that it was. I'm so, so pleased with this thing. Guys, this thing is coming together. I'm really, really excited to see this back on the road and hopefully I can get this darn thing tuned sometime soon here. We have so many other projects going on, so many things that are kind of dividing up our time left and right and all that. If you guys haven't seen some of our old videos and you are new to the channel, please check some of those out. We've got some stuff with my wife's Escalade with it's uh, got an LT4 supercharger. That's the blower that comes on the late model Z06. That thing pulls the wheels. It's got some crazy stuff. We've got a lot of help from ADM Performance and uh, they can definitely hook you up with some supercharger stuff if you guys are wanting a late model supercharger Escalade or anything like that. Uh, also, we have a LS3 powered Miata and that thing is a lot of fun. I took the Boosted Boys out for a ride and some of the guys from PFI, we had a lot of fun with that. Uh, check that video out as well, that was a blast. We also have a Caprice that has an LSA supercharger on it that is a budget build. That thing is a blast. We've been trying to hit nines with it, but again, we've been kind of stuck doing a whole bunch of other projects and such. We've hit 10-1 with the car, so, 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 so close with that. And then, so we just got another car, a BMW E46, and that is uh, going to be a drift car that we're gonna be able to take a bunch of people for rides. I actually passed up a couple deals on some cars that would have been more late model and had a little bit more power and so on and so forth, but we ended up going with that car because we can take four people in it and drift with it. A lot of the stuff of what we do and what we're building is in an effort to kind of serve some of our veterans and first responders, all sorts of people that have given and served our community and our country. So we really, really do appreciate you guys so much. We hope that what we do day in and day out, you know, lightens your day, makes everything a little bit easier and more fun. We're gonna be taking some people out for rides in this and the Caprice and a, and a whole bunch of other projects coming up very, very shortly. So look forward to seeing you guys sometime soon. God bless you guys. Thanks for watching. Guys, so we got some engine covers. That one's off a of ZR1 and that one's off of a Camaro ZL1 and this one is off a of late model Corvette. 
We're going to have the rest of the crew sign them up. Those are also going to be contributed to part of our giveaway. Give each one as the giveaways get greater towards Christmas. Hey, George, a little later, um, we just grab all the uh, turbo stuff. I think I have somebody that wants to buy it, the Tahoe stuff. Can't wait to see the redneck that pulls up and buys this. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that? That guy should have been here any, much, any minute to pick it up. How much was he giving us? Oh, 200 bucks or something like that. That's a good Are deal. Are you serious? 200 bucks? Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> it's yours, seriously. Yeah, right. I'm dead serious. I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Yeah, right. Are you serious? I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> Georgie! Dude, are you for real? For real? That's pretty crazy, man. Dude, you gonna make me cry a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that. Full spool. <laughs> Full spool! <laughs> We're gonna be ripping. We're gonna be ripping. the tune also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, come here, man. Uh, see, see, this is why I would be giving you a rough time today, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're being such a jerk today. I was like having second thoughts. He was thoughts, being man. hard on you today. Oh. Oh, turn it up. Dang, girl. I think Holly's on that spray. <laughs>